I always like to get away from, you know, everyday life. Not that I couldn't do an everyday 9 to 5 job, but being little I was able to uh, become the world's smallest stripper. Who can say that? Are you ready? You excited yeah. to be here? My name is Cassandra, and I am the world's smallest exotic dancer. I go by Sassy Cassie. I travel the country to different gentlemen's clubs and perform my shows, doing acrobatics, climbing the pole, just having an adventure. I am two foot ten inches tall and um, 30 years old. Hello! Hi, honey. How are you? Good. Thank my you. girl. The dwarfism that I have is called cartilage hair hypoplasia, also known as CHH for abbreviation. That type of dwarfism is very rare. Not many people in the country have it. Ugh. This is where you and me are sleeping, Marley. My dwarfism affects my hips quite badly right now. Mobility is, Get up here. you know, walking long distances is hard for me. I can still do my acrobatics as far as handstands and climbing the pole. As far as daily things, I can still do the things that somebody five and a half feet can do. I just have to work a little bit harder and get things that will adapt to my height. Yeah, I'm gonna get you food in a minute, Mr. Whiny Pants. Excuse me, Lila. I first started dancing when I was 19 years old. An agency reached out to me and they said, would you like to join our company, travel the world to different clubs and make money? And at 19 years old, I was like, hell yeah, of course. Here I go. You know, and that's kind of how it all started. I didn't choose this job, I was asked to do it. It's f cool. I try to um, keep my career life separate from my family life. You know, I'm still me because my job doesn't define who I am as a person, but we don't talk about it. You know, we're up at the cabin right now just having fun time with my little cousins. Everybody's hungry, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what, what are we making? Um, egg burritos with some steak and veggies. No onions, onions in mine. mine. <laughs> no onions in yours? And just you know, keeping that separate because it doesn't need to be brought up, you know. This is a lot. <laughs> I'm telling you. It looks good now. Not that they, you know, disown me for it, but it's just something that, you know, not every family wants to hear that you're a stripper. Early on, it was very difficult. It was, it w of course, was not my choice for her, and she knows that. And then I worked through it, and she has her own journey. It's not my journey. My family was very scared and nervous for me doing this, but I always had, you know, somebody to travel with me. Mary, can you turn it off, please? From the moment Cassie was born, she was a little spitfire. Yes. She was the child that would go right up to the line and step over it. Okay, who wants the first one? My father, he is about six feet tall. My mother, I'd say an average woman's height, and, um, my sister, who's also little, same type of dwarfism, she's just about three feet tall. No, you can't eat this, Marley. It's mine. Me and my sister, I'd say we are complete opposites. As far as, you know, me being the world's smallest dancer and her being the world's smallest minister, pretty different, you know, ends of the spectrum there. I'm in the process of trying to become ordained. My sister is an exotic dancer and that, that is the path she chose, and I don't really know why she chose that path, but um, I love her and I support her. I, I don't always agree with the decisions she makes, but she doesn't always agree with the decisions I make, and that's part of being siblings. You, you look out for each other, you try to protect each other, and so, you know, I worry about her and she worries about me. I think you know why I decided to just jump on the gun with this job so quickly is because it'd be fun. You know, I always like to get away from, you know, just everyday life, you know, and this was a chance to do that, a chance to make money. I have met a lot of celebrities. I have 
performed on stage with Snoop Dogg. That was a lot of fun. Um, he's quite tall compared to me. <laughs> Sometimes I've been to bikini bars where it's just, you know, you gotta wear full bottoms, you can't take off your top. Some clubs have been topless and some have been nude. I've done them all. Um, I do a lot of pole work in my shows, gymnastics, you know, um, cartwheels, handstands. There are, you know, certain things that I won't do. I have been offered, you know, to be a porn star and I turned down the offer. It's not something I want to do with my life. I have plenty of porn star friends. They're great people and I love them, but just not the career that I want to do. This one club in Las Vegas wanted me to uh, come out on stage in a diaper and a bonnet and then take my clothes off. I told the guy that, oh hell no, that is highly inappropriate. I'm not going to be able to be a dancer my whole entire life. You know, my body is going to not be able to dance anymore and I'm going to have to do a different career. I would like to do it, you know, as long as I can, as long as I still enjoy it. After I'm done dancing, I would love to write a book on all my travels. I have a bunch of funny stories, you know, some real life stuff. She's taken what she's been given and she's made a life for herself and I, I'm proud of her. I'm proud of my beautiful child. I want my photos to show that I can be sexy in any size. You can be super duper tall at like 6'4", and you can be 3'4 at my own standard, and you can still look so sexy and cute and just beautiful in your way. <laughs> Hi! Thanks for coming. Oh my God, super excited. I decided I wanted to be a model about a year ago. It is a little difficult for people to see okay. that sexy does not have a size. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna have you turn, turn around. this way. Yeah. Okay. So the look I'm kind of looking for today is just, I'm doing streetwear, so I kind of want something edgy. I love braids. Braids always look really, really nice in my hair. Something natural for the beach, you know, just something flowy, something cute. Did I miss something? Hi, Dad. Look how cute. Is it good? Yeah. Awesome, look at my eyebrows. Oh my God, thank you. It looks so good. The hardest learning curve of becoming a model is honestly being completely vulnerable to the camera and to the photographer as well. I had to discover my curves. I had to learn how to work with it. I mean, a lot of little people, we got big butts, so we got to learn how to make it work. We have either big foreheads, we have different sized limbs, we have so many different complications. But as long as you see yourself as who you are, that's sexy. That's it. Oh, you look amazing. <laughs> I got it. You want to see? Yes. It? I, I love, love that, that one. one. <laughs> oh my god, that one looks so good. This is so good. You gorgeous. literally captured it. Oh, I love it. Growing up with dwarfism is probably the most challenging thing anyone can do in their life. In my family, I'm the only dwarf in all of history with my family line. So they were kind of learning as I was learning through my life. They did the best they could and they did a really good job. My hometown is complete opposite of Los Angeles. Reno, Nevada is very small, so it's very small in diversity, even just as in ideas or dreams that you would like to have. They teased and they made hurtful names. It was hard growing up as a kid trying to understand why everybody was so mean to you. I do have a lot of anxiety. I mean, I am small, so I do have to watch out 24 seven of people around me, make sure I'm not stepped on, pushed, hit, or even just taken in general. I left my hometown two weeks after graduating high school. <laughs> I decided to go to the Art Institute here in Los Angeles, California, uh, and they have a summer program and I wanted to get a head start on my career. I wanted to do fashion marketing, which I'm graduating with my bachelor's very soon this year. I don't want anybody else to feel like they cannot express themselves like the way I did back home. Los Angeles is the most diverse city I've ever been to, so I completely love it here. Hi. 
find the place okay? Of course. Awesome. Hi. That's my friend Dylan. Dylan. She did my hair and makeup, thank God. Awesome. You look gorgeous. <laughs> thank you, thank you. So. Okay, so this is kind of like a streetwear type look. I'm gonna be kind of edgy, but I want some like really cool backgrounds in the back. So like okay. some cool paintings, flowers. You mentioned flowers, I'm already set up for Perfect. right here. Perfect, you got it. You right literally are speaking my mind, so that's even better. So uh, you have everything set up, so. Yeah. Perfect. So when okay. you're ready, let's okay. start. Modeling has boosted my confidence a ton. I feel a lot sexier in front of the camera. It's a different Drew that likes to be exposed. Honestly, there's no other words. I just, I love being in front of the camera. You did so awesome. good. Awesome. My photos with Drew, I hope, will get the message to people that it doesn't matter who you are or what size you are to be what you want to be. True is maybe she may be shorter than you know your average per person, me, but um, it doesn't change from her her ambition to be a model. Maximilian. I haven't seen you guys in so long. Hi, honey. So how are you? I Good. miss you. You look pretty. But I wanted you here. No, you were my first photographer no, ever. I got you. I'm always there. I love fashion. You get to get to wear whatever you want, and no one cares. I love being able to have something that fits. I look cute, I look sexy, and I'm going out. And I'm gonna have everybody notice me, not just for my size, but because of how I dress and how confident I am in my clothing. I was, does the dress look good? Should I let it go? With me being a model, I do receive a lot of comments and hurtful things on Instagram, Facebook. I do not like the M word, which is the exact same as you would think of it as the N word. So if anything, please, I am just a little person at most, and I'm honestly just a human being. You call me Drew. That's it. I don't need to be expressed in any other word or any other way. I'm Drew. I probably would honestly prefer to still be a little person versus average. I definitely see things that a lot of people miss or don't perceive in a certain way. It's definitely made me into who I am today, and I could never be more prouder than who I am. Drew is an amazing model. Uh, the camera loves her. I had so much fun shooting with her. Um, she knows how to work the camera. She knows every angle, her signature. <laughs> she's, she's just amazing and so much fun to work with. I have great friends, I have great support that I probably wouldn't be here without them. Give me that shoulder. Teamwork makes the dream work. You guys don't even know how serious that is. I would not be here without my support, my hair and makeup artists, my photographers, friends, family, all of it. I would not be here without them. I just want to be respected, I want to be accepted, and I want to make something beautiful for the world. Whether it be clothing or just me being myself, I want everybody in the fashion world just to be accepted. I want anybody to be able to walk that runway just like anybody else. If anyone's having trouble embracing their sexiness, just be yourself. Being yourself is completely sexy. Having a smile is completely sexy. Confidence in yourself is completely sexy. Nobody wants anybody that's scared to be themselves. So just express yourself, don't be ashamed, don't be afraid, and F all the haters if they don't like it. It's you, it's your only life. I kind of do enjoy having good condition because like being average height would just be so weird to me now. It's just the way I dress. I don't think about trends just because I've never been able to find the trendy items. So I form my own style. Essentially, pretty much all of these are from the kids section, aside from maybe one or two items. My mum hates the fact that I have so many stripy tops, but I just find them so easy to shop with some plain trousers. Clashing patterns on the odd occasion. So I have a contraplasia, which is a form of a torso, it's a, where you have an average sized torso, but your limbs are shorter. I am three foot eight, I believe. It's not something I think about. Go to the kids section first, because I'm more likely to find something there than the adult section. I get the odd stare from a child, but it's more so the parent who will ask me, not in a derogatory or condescending manner. It's like, oh, you still find stuff in this section. That must be really good for you because it's cheaper. Mostly trousers are altered. Tops I can get away with now and again. Sleeves on jumpers. It's a nightmare. It 
started as a blog about fashion. I've always wanted to start a blog, but blogging is becoming so normalised now and everybody's doing it. You've had to find a niche. I was talking to a friend maybe two years ago. I said, oh, I really like your outfits. So I started posting in April 2018 as one or two posts as I was away at the time and I really liked my outfits. I did not know how to caption anything or how to approach the subject. So I just posted, kept posting like that before I realised, okay, this could be something serious. Just became twice to three times a week, sometimes daily, if I'm really liking my outfit. It's just the way I dress. I don't think about trends. Don't really think about how everybody else is styling themselves. Just because I've never been able to find the trendy items, so I form my own style. People ask me, where do you get the stop? How do you do it? Because I've been searching for this for ages and it's really helped me. And the rewarding aspect of that just makes me want to push it further. You'll find plenty of time to tidy your room, wouldn't you? Because I think... When Caitlin was born, she had a clean bill of health. Everything seemed normal. As the months progressed, she just didn't get any bigger. And it took six months of blood tests and checkups to come to the conclusion that she had achondroplasia, mm. which is the most common form of dwarfism. Caitlin's done everything she wanted to do, other than, you know, have a full-size hockey stick, because that wasn't a good idea. <laughs> so a lot of issues we face is going to the bathroom in public. I'm just going to put it out there because a lot of the door locks are too high. The same applies to when I'm paying for something in a shop. The card holder will not reach out. So I have to pass it to a friend or mm. pass it to the assistant who will do it for me. She appears different to people and people don't know how to approach her. There's a lot of negativity around. And really, I think we should all be positive and all see each other for who we are. No, no, that is always very emotional for us when we have to talk about Caitlin mm. all the time. Recently, she went off to London on her own, on a train, to meet a friend, and we were worried sick. And that's her first taste of the independence at 18 and a half. It's the first time she's done something on her own, which I think for a lot of people would be quite normal, but for her it was a big deal. I normally walk around the house to do this. She was really artistic. The first day that I met her, she was playing guitar and I thought that was quite cool. Her fashion sense is just amazing. Like she just finds the best outfits from some random stuff and yeah. it just works so well. I will always go to Caitlin for fashion advice. Like always. Caitlin never lets anything get in her way. She's so determined yeah. to do what she wants to do and she doesn't let anything stop her, even like her condition. Yeah, like when she wants something, she wants it and she'll go for it. I kind of do enjoy having good condition because I can't think of myself in any other sort of format. Like being average height would just be so weird to me now. I was told that I was never gonna be a dancer because of how I look. I would say that being a dwarf, I never accepted who I fully am. And once I did that, it like freed me from everything. I can't reach that far. Hi, my name is Jonna Ross. I am 29 years old. I am three feet tall, which is as tall as a meter stick or a yardstick. So the type of dwarfism I have is cartilage hair hypoplasia, which means all my limbs are just smaller. Everything, my body proportion is all the same. For me specifically, I think I'm a lot shorter than most dwarfs, so that can be a problem when it comes to trying to reach things. Uh, yes, I am very down with the little person lingo. Um, personally, I don't like the word midget. That is an offensive word. Um, but a lot of people have their own opinion, but for me, I don't like to be called that. Being able to drive is like the most independent feeling because I'm so like social, I can go anywhere and everywhere whenever I want. <laughs>
which is great. So, let's see my friends. Can you open the gate, please? Hi. So, we met up at a coffee shop, but I thought it was gonna be pretty awkward. Um, like, at some point, like, I have a tendency to say the wrong thing. We kind of just understand each other and it's fine. Like, I don't, I haven't had to censor myself at all. No. But you know, she doesn't get offended very easily either, which is really cool actually. There's a lot to admire about that. She still shows up to things, like no matter what it is. So I've been swimming since I was probably like, actually like two years old. I love swimming. Swimming is like the best exercise for me personally because it helps with all like my body and it's like freeing. I love the water. I've always been like an ocean baby basically. Like my dream was to be like a mermaid. <laughs> Not a ballerina, a mermaid. Bye bye. bye. Love you. Love you too. Have fun. I'll see you later. Okay, bye. Kay. the most probably hurtful comment ever was um, she's a poster child for abortion, which is really messed up. A lot of times when I'm in public, most of the time little kids will shout out like, look at that little person, or oh my gosh, she's so short. Why is she so short? If they come and talk to me, I will just explain like I was born with a type of dwarfism. Um, it's not like a disease, you can't catch it. It's not gonna do anything to you. I just am like you, just with shorter limbs, that's it. I'm the same person as you. I was bullied probably my entire life. I love dancing ever since I was little. And then when I was about 12 or 13, I stopped because I, I was told that I was never gonna be a dancer because of how I look from a teacher. And so I chose to listen and I stopped dancing. I turned 21 and I found alcohol and it was like this magical thing that helped me be this confident, awesome person when I was drinking. Um, I felt like I could do anything, be anyone, talk to boys, like do whatever I wanted to do. It was fun at first and I was being very reckless and unhealthy and getting into a lot of trouble. I would say that being a dwarf was the reason why I drank because I never accepted who I fully am. And once I did that, it like freed me from everything. So right now I'm a little nervous because I have not been at Playground for, gosh, almost like six months. I don't know if I've gotten worse or better, I don't know. <laughs> I guess we'll find out. <laughs> I have to adapt really fast in a small amount of time. So the moves, if I can't do it, I just kind of modify, um, see what I can do, but I make it work every time. Yeah, I feel like John is in like a little league of her own. When you have people like her that come into class, uh, they put their own spin on it too. Everyone has different proportions. Some people are muscular, some people are taller, and then some people are shorter, and they have like shorter limbs, so the movement will look different. So they have to make it in their body to make it look the same as someone that's taller than them. When I was getting sober, I could see who I was while I was dancing, like my passion, how much I loved it. I was able to express myself without like saying any words. When I was at the studio, um, when they film you dance, they post or like other people were posting and I was like, Maybe I should like post my progress and like all the responses was amazing. So I was like, oh, okay, maybe I am good at this. Um, and then like I kind of blew up from there. I started posting videos of me dancing and then like 
Chris Brown posted one and Snoop Dogg posted one. And I was like, what is happening? From doing that, it helped me again figure out how much confidence I have in myself and like what I can actually do and I could actually do this. When I started dancing, I started like loving who I am, loving my body and not giving a f about what other people think anymore because my entire life I've spent so much energy on that instead of who I am and what I want to do with it.